Hello and welcome back to Game of Trades, your number one channel for videos on the stock market and cryptocurrencies. So ever since the failure of Silicon Valley Bank right here, the market has been on a nonstop run, rallying now almost 10% since its bottom. And meanwhile, if we actually take a look at what's going on uh, in the banking system, we look at deposits, the situation doesn't really seem to be stabilizing. In fact, deposit withdrawals since the failure of SVB has been getting worse. So individuals have been withdrawing their deposits from commercial banks at a faster rate since SVB, which by the way, is exactly what caused the banking crisis in the first place. So we're going to talk about that in this video, what that means for the economy, what that means for financial markets that are completely disregarding this risk right now. Of course, don't forget to smash the like button as hard as you can and subscribe to the channel. If you are new here, we make these videos multiple times a week, looking at the economy, looking at the financial markets and opportunities that we may see. Now, without further ado, let's get right into it. So if we look at this chart going back to the 1970s, and we actually put this on a year over year change, as opposed to just a cumulative view of deposits, this is what the growth of deposits actually look like. And you can see here more recently in 2023, we've seen the deepest contraction in deposits at commercial banks uh, ever since the 1970s. So you can't help to wonder if we're not seeing the complete mirror image of what we had in 2020, where you had a huge bump in deposits, a huge bump in the money supply as a result of all the easy money and the stimulus that came following the pandemic. And that created a massive boom in 2021 that took the markets much higher. It seems we're getting the mirror image of that phenomenon. And you can argue that this is going to have repercussions on the economy looking out over the next year. To actually understand why this is happening, this is something we've discussed before on this channel, but a quick reminder, it all comes down to how much yield the banks are giving for you to keep their money there. And that's those three lines here versus how much yield money market funds are actually giving. And you can see as we've had the Fed tighten monetary policy throughout 2022, of course, money market funds have been able to provide a higher yield to investors. So there's very little reason to actually keep your money in a bank right now. The yield that you're getting on your investment is so low compared to what you get in a money market fund. And on top of that, you do run the risk that your bank will fail just like SVB did. And if you have uninsured deposits in your bank, it may end up being difficult to get your money back. So if you actually take a look at what's been happening on uh, money market funds, the number of assets that have been flowing out of commercial banks and into money market funds, you can see here ever since SVB, you can see we already had a rise in money market fund assets leading up to the banking crisis. But since the banking crisis, just look at what's been happening to money market funds. It's been skyrocketing. So uh, this entire situation with Silicon Valley Bank just uh, made a lot more people aware of the fact that it makes absolutely no sense to keep your money at a bank that does have a risk of failing and that provides a very low yield. But what does this actually mean for the markets? What does this mean for uh, the S&P 500? Some people claim that because of the fact that money market fund assets are so high right now, that that's all all money that can flow into the stock market and create a melt up type of move as we see all of this money, almost $5.5 trillion in money uh, stored in money market funds get deployed into equity markets. That's a very interesting hypothesis. And one of the reasons why a lot of people are actually very bullish on the market right now. But let's see if this is actually true. If we take a look at a longer term chart of institutional money market assets, and we focus in on the two key bear markets. Now, of course, notice that money market assets go up over time as there's more and more money in the system. But what we can immediately notice in these bear markets here is that money market assets are going up leading up to the top and they're going up throughout the majority of the bear market that happened in 2000 here. And then in 2007 here, money market assets going up very violently here in 2007 at the top of the market, and they continue going up throughout the entire bear market. So you know, if you had been using that argument uh, in 2007, right here, 
let's say in May of 2008, you saw money market assets skyrocket over the past couple of years here. And you say, okay, all of this cash is going to come back into the market and it's going to create some melt up move. Well, no, the ratio just continued on moving higher until the very bottom of the market. And that's when it started to decline when cash was actually being deployed into the market. So to me, this shows that you can actually tell when the market has bottomed using this indicator, because when the market actually bottoms, you start to see money market assets decline as money from money market funds is being deployed into the equity markets. That's when the market has bottomed. Same thing happened following the bottom in 2002, money market assets start to decline as these assets are deployed into the stock market. The same thing actually happened in COVID at the very beginning of the big bull run here that we had in 2020 that was followed by much more upside in 2021. We actually had money market assets decline in the initial stages of that bull run as investors actually deployed capital into equity markets. So the fact that we're seeing money market assets go up in a parabolic move here to say that's bullish would be to disregard history. In fact, you can argue the complete opposite argument that if the market really did bottom and that we were really in a true uh, economic recovery, a true bull run, that you would see a decline in money market assets just like we did in the recovery following the financial crisis and just like we did following the recovery in 2020. Not a parabolic move up like we're seeing right now. Let me know in the comments if uh, this actually makes sense and if you think we're uh, approaching this with the right logic. And by the way, if you're learning uh, something new, don't forget to smash the like button. It helps the videos out a lot. Now, another great way to look at uh, money market assets and what that means for the stock market is by looking at retail money market ratios. Now, this is again, money market holdings, but we're specifically looking at retail money here. The institutional money is a very similar chart, but I specifically wanted to use the retail data in this video. And what this ratio basically is, is the amount of retail money in money market funds divided by the market cap of the S&P 500. So you can see uh, how much money is in money market funds versus how much money is in the S&P 500, a very simple indicator that has oscillated up and down throughout history since the 1980s and has actually often been much, much lower than where it is today. Now, you can see since uh, 2011 here, we've had this ratio uh, right around extreme levels. So in other words, since 2011, a huge amount of money has been parked in the S&P 500 and not in money market funds. So even though we're going on a melt up right now, that's very nice. But the S&P 500 has actually been uh, outperforming that over the past 10 years. Now, the big, big reason for that is because between 2009 and 2021, so until very, very recently, we actually had the easiest monetary policy that we've had since the inception of the Federal Reserve in 1913 with rates at 0%. So remember this chart here, look at where money market fund yields were between 2009 and 2021, except for briefly in 2019, they were at zero. So cash throughout this period was not attractive. And so you never saw this ratio really go down like it did in 2008, like it did uh, in the tech bust, like it did in 1990 uh, and in 1981 right here that were all, by the way, vicious bear markets. And so cash throughout this entire period was not attractive. And so investors did not have an alternative to stocks that was called Tina. There is no alternative to the stock market because the yield that you're getting in cash, the yield that you're getting at your bank, at money market funds is so low that you may as well buy stocks. But now look at where the federal funds rate is at. It's near 5% 
right here. So much higher than at any other moment that we've had between 2009 and 2021. The yield that you're getting on cash is once again at the same levels that you had during the global financial crisis, during the tech bust, where you saw this retail money market ratio actually move down much more significantly as investors fled the stock market in favor of money market funds. Again, that's not something that we've actually seen yet, despite the fact that money market funds are an attractive investment once again, really for the first time since 2007. In fact, we can actually see this relationship alive on this chart here uh, that compares the S&P 500 earnings yield against the three month treasury bill rate. So this is how much yield you can expect from the S&P 500 based on how expensive stocks are at that moment relative to how much yield you're getting on the three month treasury bill. So again, equivalent to money market fund rates between 2009 and 2021, you had stocks be very attractive relative to cash because the yield that you had on the three month treasury bill was so low that stock market valuations could go to the moon and they would still be very attractive relative to cash. Today, we have a very different type of environment where cash is once again an attractive option relative to stocks for the first time really since 2000, uh, the top of the dot com bubble where stocks were unbelievably overvalued. So you can imagine a scenario where if we do head into a recession, you need a recession for this, you could see investors flock out of the stock market and into money market funds and actually continue this move up that we're seeing in money market fund assets, just like we did throughout the 2009 recession. And we actually think that's a very plausible scenario in the next downturn and would unwind a lot of the excess money that's currently stored in the S&P 500 relative to cash. And we would finally see the stock market adapt to the new rates that we have ever since the Fed began to really tighten monetary policy. By the way, we just launched a new feature uh, on our website as requested by our members, and that is the S&P 500 memo. We have lots of different uh, types of articles and products on the website that you can select your notifications on depending on your interest. S&P 500 memo is really a look at the stock market every week, the important levels that we can trade around, the key developments that impact the stock stock market in the near term and what our base case scenario is for the stock market taking everything into account. So if you're interested in that type of product, we do have a free trial. Make sure to check out our website, sign up to our service and join our community. You will not regret it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to leave us a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Now in the meantime, I wish you good luck on your trading and see you next time.